gender and voice type, you will notice in the syllabus that throughout, as I mentioned, the gentlemen's and the ladies' editions, you will notice that when we list, we give the list, we divide the songs into ladies and gentlemen, which means there's really no gender-specific um, indication there. It's sung by anyone. A ladies' list and then a gentlemen's list. For presentation in the syllabus, you may present anything. Your candidate may present anything from the list. So let's say I was picking a piece. I am allowed to sing anything from the entire list, even though it's we put it down here as a, a, you know a ladies' piece. All that is there for is really to indicate to you that that's what it was. That's who it was originally written for, not that that's who it should be sung by. Of course, there are vocal considerations. Of course. Absolutely. There are just some things that a, a, a man can't sing or there are just some things vocally that a, a woman can't sing. But again, only you get to make that decision. Are you guys cold? Yeah. Okay, could we? We were worried about, you know, a lot of hot air in the room. I say that in the nicest possible way. <laughs> Most of the hot air is from me, but um, we were worried about that. So we'll, we'll get them to adjust that. Everyone breathe out. <sighs> Great, it's already warmer. Um, so I know that this is a journey for everybody to understand, but it's actually common practice amongst musical theatre performers to sing across genders. Uh, and it's pretty common and pretty standard. Uh, the journey is mostly for us, not for the students. They're pretty, pretty comfortable with it. Again, not everything, because you'll, you'll make the decision based on what's appropriate for the students standing in front of you. There are key signature considerations, and I'll talk about that when we get to talk about transposition. Any questions about that? I'm sure there are. Okay. Yes? So you're um, interpreting more kind of cabaret Yep. Great question. Well done. Um, you were the star of the day. You're now back to being the star of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so you, I think you have two choices. You can stand up and deliver the piece. Let's say you're a lady singing a lady's song. That's absolutely fine. Uh, you can do it as if you're in the musical, in the moment. That's absolutely fine. You can also give an incredibly truthful and realistic performance by taking it out of context and creating your own interpretation of it that's uh, appropriate and relevant to you, that makes sense to you, um, which is fine. If that happened in an exam situation, during the general knowledge, I'm fairly certain I would ask the candidate why, what was behind that decision, where, what, what was going on in your head, you know. I, I'd be curious to know uh, what they were thinking when they did that. There, sometimes uh, a candidate, uh, I taught a boy a couple of years ago and he came to me and said to me that he wanted to do um, I Feel Pretty from West Side Story. And I said, okay, why? And he said, well, I like, this, I like the piece and I think it'd be cool. And I said, I, it's not a good enough reason for me, I, I, I'm happy for you to do anything as long as you have, you've got something new to tell me. I need to know that you've got something important to say in this piece and some new interpretation of it that's going to take it somewhere else. Then I'm interested. If you're doing it because you want to be clever or you think it's clever, that's going to show. So you have to have something important to say. 